Which players should you be stashing on your dynasty teams? We're talking about that in today's video. As always, like and subscribe. I think we are 40 subscribers away from 500. Hoping to get there before the season starts, and I think we can. Appreciate you guys' support. Uh, if you haven't checked out, I've already made one of these videos on the AFC teams. This one's on the NFC teams. Going through every single NFC team and picking out one player that I think you should potentially stash if you have roster space. Um, especially before training camps start. Training camp's going to start. Today's July 8th. This video will come out, I believe, on July 9th. Uh, so that means training camps are, what, two weeks away, basically, from like all training camps starting. Um, and when we start getting news, players are going to go up and down, up and down. And I think a, a lot of these players are potentially guys that could increase or, de you know, hopefully increase in value. Now, these are deep dynasty stashes, most of these. Um I have a kind of a criteria. Again, if you didn't watch the other video, my criteria is quarterbacks ranked outside of the top 36, running backs outside of the top 75, wide receivers outside of the top 100, and tight ends outside of the top 30. So I believe most of these fit that criteria. There may be a couple where I had to cheat, but let's just get right into it, starting with the NFC West and starting with the Arizona Cardinals, Xavier Weaver. He is a undrafted rookie free agent. Uh, I made a full video on him kind of breaking down, you know, um, the film, breaking down the, the raw stats, the analytical stats, um, kind of just going into it and, and my thoughts on, you know, him potentially making the roster and having an impact for the team. Again, it's very unlikely he's going to have an impact. Undrafted rookie free agent, undrafted free agents generally don't have impacts, but the Arizona Cardinals, they need consistent wide receiver play you have marvin harrison jr you have michael wilson who we're still a little unsure about you know you have zay jones who we kind of know what zay jones is you probably want him at best as your wide receiver three um but hopefully more as a wide receiver four you know he's 29 years old and um he's just a solid possession receiver so xavier worthy could find his way on this uh, sorry xavier weaver could find his way on this team and and potentially make an impact in in 2025 um i don't know necessarily too much about um about in 2024 just because it's it's a kind of a tall task to to make an impact there so xavier weaver who's not even ranked on keep trade cut um is my choice for the arizona cardinals and just so you know um he that means not ranked on keep trade cut means he's not even in the top 186 receivers so he's definitely out there on your way wire aj barner is up next mr AJ Barner for the Seattle Seahawks. He's a player that he kind of went under my radar a little bit. Um, Seattle drafted him in the fourth round, which is pretty good draft capital for a tight end. You know, tight ends, you generally want to be in the top four, even top five rounds. Um, you know, it's not necessarily like other positions. And, you know, we, we, we saw some tight ends go. Obviously, we saw, um, you know, Brock Bowers, Ben Sinnott, uh, Tip Raymond, Jatavian Sanders, Theo Johnson, Eric All, and then and then AJ Barner. He went over guys like that. People are excited about guys like Kate Stover, Jared Wiley, um, you know, a couple of guys like that. So he went 121st overall to the Seattle Seahawks. He played at Michigan, um, was okay at Michigan, only had 22 catches, um, wasn't highly involved. Um, so you know, it was a little surprising. I think that that he was drafted. I don't think people were expecting him. Um, to be drafted necessarily, but uh, I was just trying to look up some of his, um, you know, his measurables and, and things like that. Uh, I think he, you know, he, he doesn't have anything super impressive necessarily. So I'm, I'm interested to see, maybe they drafted him more as a blocker, but um, you know, I, I'm kind of a buy low also on, on Noah Fant, just because I think with this new Seattle offense, it could be a lot better. They could pass the ball more. They could run more plays. Um, and um, you know, I, I think, they could potentially get a tight end involved here. And maybe, maybe AJ Barner is kind of the heir apparent to Noah fans. My favorite dynasty stash out of all teams, all players is Jordan Whittington. If you watch this channel, you know, I love this guy. Jordan Whittington um, is on the um, Los Angeles Rams. He was drafted sixth round pick 213. And I, I'm putting my flag in, in Jordan Whittington and saying, like, this guy could be really, really surprising for people. You know, is he going to be Puka Nakua? I don't know, right? Probably not, right? The, the chances of him being Puka Nakua are slim to none. But the chances of him getting on the field 
and producing are actually pretty good. Real quick, Jordan Whittington in college, you know, he was behind guys like Xavier Worthy, Adonai Mitchell, you know, Jonathan Brooks, you know, in the run game, and even Jatavian Sanders, the, the tight end for the Texan, uh, the Texas college team. So he was behind a lot of players. He still was pretty productive, 40 catches, 500 yards, um, one touchdown. He could be used a little bit more as a, as a returner. He has some kick return experience and things like that. But also, you just go to the Rams' depth chart, just go to their depth chart real quick. And obviously you have Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. And then you have Demarcus Robinson, Tutu Atwell, right? Jordan Winnington is already listed as the wide receiver five on this team. So he's probably going to make the team, especially because they drafted him, right? Demarcus Robinson, yeah, he had a good stretch there. Uh, what, four or five week stretch where he was catching touchdowns and, and he was fantasy relevant. But the fact of the matter is, Demarcus Robinson's been in the league since 2016. He's played with Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. And he's never put, and now Matthew Stafford, he's never put up more than 500 yards in his career or more than 50 catches, right? So, like, yeah, the the stretch last year was nice, but um, you know, doesn't mean he can't be replaced. Tutu Atwell is another player, um, you know, who was good to start the year last year, but he got replaced by Demarcus Robinson. So, um, I really like Jordan Winnington and the possibility of him fitting in at the slot. I think he could kind of eat you up in the slot. I think there's room for him to get on the field. So I'm really excited about him. I would stash him on your team. I think he's going to start getting some hype. And then Jacob Cowing is my last one for the uh, San Francisco 49ers. He's exactly wide receiver 100. Jacob Cowing is a fun, fun player to watch. Uh, super productive in college. Basically, his entire college career... Uh, which spanned five years, 2019 to 2023. The dude was just always producing. Even his first couple of years, he was putting up 30, 40 catches, five to 700 yards, right? That's pretty impressive for your first couple of years. And then he got a step up um, his his sophomore and junior year, 1,354 yards, seven touchdowns, 1034 and seven touchdowns. And then last year for Arizona, he put up 90 catches at 850 yards and 13 touchdowns. The dude is super, super productive. He's going to be a slot player. Um, his production profile is off the charts. His production profile is one of the best in this draft class. I did make a specific video on him if you want to uh, go and check that out. Um, but just kind of pulling up his, his production profile, he had a 33% dominator rating, which means over his five years in college, he accounted for 33% of his team's passing offense um, and was just consistently, he never fell below 25%, which is really, really good. He broke out at the age of 18 years old. He runs a 4.38, which is pretty fast, right? Um, you know, um, his 10 yard split is pretty good. Now he's small. He's 5'11", 170, 180, some, somewhere around there, but his yards per route run were awesome. Um, you know, yards after catch was awesome. His contested catch percentage is decent. So I really like Jacob Cowing. He falls onto the um, onto the 49ers, and they invested a, a decent draft pick in him, even though they drafted Ricky Pearsall. You have Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. They, they invested a fourth-round pick in him. And so um, Jacob Cowing, you know, could be part of this maybe new, this revamped, 49ers wide receiver core heading into the 2025 season. Maybe no more Ayuk, maybe no more Debo, who knows? And then you have guys like Pearsall and Jacob Cowing who are kind of leading the way here. So really like Jacob Cowing. He has fun, fun tape. Moving on to the NFC North Hendon, Hooker. Um, I made a, a, a video on him. I think he should be stashed for sure. Uh, he's down there at QB 46. He's one of the high-end backups that I want for, for two reasons. He's the backup, by the way, to Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions. Um, there's two reasons why I want him as a backup. One, he plays on the Lions, and I believe that if he gets put into action there, he is going to be on a good offense in a good system that's going to set him up perfectly. And number two, the guy runs. The guy's a runner in, in college. Now, he didn't play last year because he tore his ACL late in the 2022 college season. Um, but in college, the guy rushed for over 600 yards twice, and his last year in college, he ran for... 430 yards, which again is impressive in college because sacks count towards negative rushing yards. So, and then Hooker is a high end backup that I want to um, target on my team just in case something happens to the golf. 
Tyson Bajan, kind of another one here. It, Bears didn't really have a good option here, so I just went with Bajan. He's all the way down at QB 65, which is is kind of funny. It's like, does I understand. We never thought Tyson Bajan was going to start, right? I, we No one ever thought he was going to go into the um, season as the starter for the Bears, right? And so I know why he dropped so much was because of Caleb um, Williams being drafted. But go look at their depth, depth chart. Um Tyson Bajan is probably the the quarterback too. You have Brett Ripien, who's terrible, and Austin Reed, um, who's a a rookie out of um, Western Kentucky. Tyson Bajan, um, or is it Bajan? I always forget if it's. I think it's Bajan. Uh, Tyson Bajan could be the is probably the backup for the Bears. And now you know they have a good offense. DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roman Dunze, Cole Komet, Gerald Everett, DeAndre Swift, Roshan Johnson, a lot of good offensive players there so you put him in he could just be like a solid again it's more of a qb4 at best in the super flex league but that's still valuable if he takes over for caleb williams in case there's an injury another quarterback here is uh michael pratt he's the backup uh he is a backup quarterback for the green bay packers i think he wins the job for the packers now maybe year one they're gonna be they have jordan love sean clifford and michael pratt those are the three quarterbacks on their team. Michael Pratt's going to make this team, whether it's the QB two or QB three, I'm not sure. Maybe it's like the de facto QB two, but you know, if something happens to love, they put in Sean Clifford just because he's been there um, a couple more years. I believe Sean Clifford uh, one more year. He was around five pick, but uh, Michael Pratt, if, if you go back and look at some of the draft uh, mock drafts and, and draft analysts, pre NFL draft back in like February, you know, you had the top, the top guys you had, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, um, you know, J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, uh, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, those six. Michael Pratt, for a lot of t- people, was like the QB7 after that group. And so he fell all the way to the seventh round. I think it was a great pick. I think Michael Pratt's going to play 10 years in the NFL and just be like a solid backup. And again, if we saw the injuries to quarterbacks last year, Jake Browning and Joe Flacco won people their dynasty leagues because they rostered them and, and you know, they got consistent production from them. And then for the Minnesota Vikings, I have Dwayne McBride. The Vikings were a little bit of a harder team as well. I was actually surprised that Dwayne McBride is not further down the list. I was surprised he was this high at RB85. Um, I was, you know, I liked Dwayne McBride last year. Um, I liked him coming out of college, coming out of UAB, super productive in college. You know, he's 5'10", 2'10", 215, kind of that stereotypical running back build. Um... You know, he was around seven pick by the um, by the Vikings, and he spent the entire year on the on the practice squad. He never he never made it. Um, he never made it onto the team, I don't believe. Um, but you know, he, he runs a, a, a four five. He has a good size, a low four five. He has a good size, like. And then I, I I kind of just think of this Vikings depth chart, and I just think, okay, you have Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler, and then you have. Uh, Kine uh, Nwangwu, I think I'm saying that wrong, but and Miles Gaskin, like there's a there's room, I guess, for um, Dwayne McBride to make the team as the RB three for this team, and you know you got an older Aaron Jones who who's been hurt a lot in his career, still kind of unknown with what we have with Ty Chandler, and you kind of see a path for Dwayne McBride. Maybe he's a guy just to stash, see what happens during preseason, and then move on. Moving on to the NFC East. And again, guys, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. On the NFC East, we have wide receiver Anaya Smith. Um, Anaya Smith is a very interesting prospect. I think he had some legal issues, if I remember correctly. Um, double check that, though. I don't want to just necessarily go out and say that. I think he had some legal legal issues. He played at um, he played at Texas A&M. This is for the Philadelphia Eagles, by the way. The Eagles drafted him in the fifth round. A lot of people were kind of like... If there's any player who's going to be drafted day three that like is good value and could make an impact on the team, it's Anaya Smith. Um, and so, um, you know, he kind of played the running back wide receiver hybrid type of uh, position. I think he started off his career as a running back, then took over as kind of a wide receiver. Had a good year last year, 53 catches, 800 yards, two touchdowns. You know, can kind of be used in that hybrid role as a, as a running back slash um, wide receiver. Um, I think he's also going to be kind of a punt or kick returner for this team as well. And if so, if your if your team or if your league rewards kick and punt returns, he's a guy that could do both. 
and that could be very valuable. Um, I just think he kind of fills a role for the Eagles that they don't have with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith are their guys. And I Smith can be like that, just that weapon for them in the slot, in the backfield, all over the field, you know, jet passes, all that stuff. And again, you look at their depth chart, and Ice Smith is already considered the wide receiver four for this team. And wide receiver three is Paris Campbell. I'm not worried about Paris Campbell. Like, Anaya Smith could beat out Paris Campbell very easily. He's all the way down there at wide receiver 118, according to Keep Trade Cut. Um, potentially going at him and see what happens during the um, offseason or during the training camp. Drew Locke for the New York Giants is up next. And again, I've talked about Drew Locke a lot. He's one of these guys that I can easily see. He's one of the few backup quarterbacks that I could see starting games, not because the starter gets injured. And so when you have that situation of you have kind of two chances to get on the field, the starter sucking or the starter getting injured, there's a really good chance that you're going to get on the field this year. And Drew Locke, to me, goes to the Giants. He could be just he could just be a better quarterback than Daniel Jones. He could be a better passer. And so you get him on the Giants, you know, and maybe he could be QB 20 or something if he gets to start. Jalen Tolbert for the uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. Sorry. Um, all the way down to wide receiver 105. I thought he would kind of shoot up a little bit more after, all, you know, there's been some hype around him in OTAs and stuff like that. Um, and, and potentially him kind of, all right, he's finally coming into his role. Um you know, that he he was a, a third-round pick, by the way, in 2022. Third-round pick in 2022. Uh, obviously, he hasn't done anything. Only had, you know, 268 yards last year. Was playing behind Cooks and, um, and Michael Gallup. But now Michael Gallup's gone. You look at his last couple years at South Alabama, Jalen Tolbert in college. Um, over almost 1,500 yards his last year at South Alabama. Eight touchdowns, so really good production. Again, a third round pick as well. Like that's not nothing, right? We can see them now. Generally, we want to see players do something in their first couple of years, but um, that doesn't mean there's guys that can't, you know, year three kind of break out, right? Um, so he he has some things that are intriguing about him. Um, and the, the most intriguing thing to me is, is essentially like, again, you look at the depth chart, it's CD Lamb, Brandon Cooks, and then Jalen Tolbert's already the wide receiver three here. Right. And see, and Brandon, we're talking about Brandon Cooks, who's um, how old is Brandon Cooks now? Uh, we're talking about Brandon Cooks, who's going to be 31 essentially shortly after the season starts. And then there's a lot of nothing behind him. So, like, he could take over as the consistent number two option for the Dallas Cowboys, which is going to have some value at the wide receiver position, at least. And then we have Michael Wiley. This is a deep, deep stash here, guys. This is for the Washington Commanders. Michael Wiley. Um, he is a running back again for the Commanders, went undrafted. And all I really have to say here is um, this dude is maybe one of the best pass-catching running backs in the entire draft class, um, just in terms of his yards per route run and, and kind of the advanced metrics. His raw numbers are are fine. You know, last year, 28 for 306 and five touchdowns. But more of the, the yards per route run, um, kind of the more analytical numbers where you look at how much opportunity he had, and actually those numbers are really good considering the low amount of opportunity he had. Um, he could kind of be groomed to take over that Eckler role when Eckler either gets hurt or is just too old, right? Now, does he even make the team? I don't know. I don't really know. But what you have on the Washington Commanders is you have Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson, Chris Rodriguez Jr., um, you know, Jeremy McNichols, and then Michael Wiley. Like, Michael Wiley could find his way on the team if he can play special teams. Um, you know, that's obviously a plus if he can do that. He does have some kick returns, um, his kick return experience. So he's a very deep stash, but, you know, it really wasn't anyone else better for the Washington Commanders. Moving into the NFC South, the last division here, I have Casey Washington. Again, I've made a video specifically about Casey Washington. Go check him out and check out that video. Um, Casey Washington, a six-round pick for the Falcons, is super fun. And he's getting a lot of hype. And people are saying, like, he's just awesome in rookie minicamps and OTAs. And once again, this is a team where there's opportunity. That's what's mo so important. Opportunity is, is key when we're looking for a fantasy rookie, you know, deep stash breakouts, it's all about the opportunity, right? Um, you go look at their wide receiver core. You have Drake London, Darno Mooney, Rondell Moore. 
That's their one, two, or three at wide receiver. I'm not worried about Darnell Mooney and Rondell Moore. Car- Kaderil Hodge, Ray Ray McLeod, you know, guys like this. Now, do I think he beats out Darnell Mooney or Rondell Moore in year one? No. But if he is good, he will beat them out. You know, he will beat one of them out for sure. Because they're not like this, oh, un- untouchable. They're going to put the best players on the field. It's not like they have, you know, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd, where it's like they're not going to replace these guys. It's Darnell Mooney and Rondell Moore, like guys that have flashed. You know, Darnell Mooney had a thousand yard season, but he's been disappointing since. Rondell Moore, a bit of a, dis- a, a disappointing second round pick. So keep in mind Casey Washington, and, and I would pick him up before the season, uh, the tra- training camp start. Sean Tucker for the Buccaneers. Again, not really good options here for the Bucks. Sean Tucker's down at RB83. Um, you know, there was a little bit of hype around him coming into uh, the season last year. He was a, um, I'm trying to remember, I believe he was undrafted. Yeah, he was undrafted last year. I think he had some uh, medical stuff that prevented him from um, uh, participating in like the combine and, and pro day. So, but he was super productive in college, you know, over 1,300 total yards in 2022. Uh, 1,700 total yards in, in 2021. Uh, can catch the ball, is um, really, really fast. I believe his 40-yard time is um, in the four threes. Yeah, he runs a four three, um, potentially. I think it was only only uh, A-Chan and Gibbs ran faster than him. Um, yeah, uh, only I was just double-checking that. Only Gibbs and A-Chan ran faster than him. Um, and I, I understand why he's fallen is because, you know, they drafted Bucky Irving, right? And I like Bucky Irving, and I think Bucky Irving is the number two guy. But I am interested if, um, you know, I, I, we, I think we do this a lot where, like, oh, they brought in a new player that they drafted in the fourth or fifth round. And uh, so we automatically forget about, like, the guy who we thought was the RB2. We just kind of leave him, throw him to the side. And um, I am kind of curious if, if, if Rashad White does get hurt, I don't think it's just going to be, okay, Bucky Irving, take over the backfield. It could be more, Bucky Irving, you stay in your role as this pass catcher. Sean Tucker, you take the between the tackle stuff. So I, I still think he has a decent chance at, um, at being the RB3 for this team. And and I I would say almost all RB3s should be rostered on Dynasty teams. So I know Chase Edmonds is also still there, but I think Sean Tucker's is better. Sean Tucker's better than Chase Edmonds at this point. Two more players for you. The Panthers were damn near impossible to find someone. I had to go with Miles Sanders. Super big disappointing. I was kind of in on Miles Sanders last year. Man, it just shows you know, just because you get a contract, that doesn't necessarily mean you're you're guaranteed anything. Uh, Miles Sanders, all the way down at RB81. Only thing I'll say here is um, there, I think there's a chance that he either, you know, is not on the Panthers. They have a whole new coaching staff in there. They want their guys. They have Jonathan Brooks, Shuba Hubbard. There's a chance that they just part ways with Miles Sanders, and he finds his way on a on a little bit more needy, te- running back needy team like the Dallas Cowboys or something like that. Um, and, you know, he has an impact this year for a, a few weeks stretch. So tough to ask you to hold on or stash Miles Sanders, but he's the only one really I can come up with for the Carolina Panthers. And then we have A.T. Perry. He's the one I cheated on. Our uh, wide receiver, 91. And I, I, I want to mention two players here. Um, Bub Means and A.T. Perry. I have a, a specific video on Bub Means. Bub Means is a rookie, by the way. Um, he, he's a rookie, um, I believe, round five pick rookie. Yeah. A.T. Perry in, in um, 2022 was a round five pick. So both these guys um, kind of have similar chances to to make it to on the team. You know, I think they're going to make it on the team, but, um, you know, make it to the starting lineup. How I how I view the Saints right now is we have Chris Olave. He's going to play all over the field. You have uh, Rashid Shahid, who can play on the outside, but can also play on the in the slot. And I think he might be a little bit better as a slot player, maybe as a vertical slot player. And to me, we have a, a spot on the Saints to fill for that X outside wide receiver, right? Because you look at their depth chart again, you have Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, Cedric Wilson is one, two, three. And then A.T. Perry, Equinemia, St. Brown, and Bub Means. Essentially, I think it's between Cedric Wilson, A.T. Perry, 
Bub Means, and maybe Equinemia St. Brown, one of those four players to play that X, to win the X outside wide receiver role for the Saints, and is going to be on the field a decent amount, right? And they're going to have a little bit of production because of it. My money is on A.T. Perry. My money is on A.T. Perry. I'm not too worried about Cedric Wilson. Cedric Wilson is... Um, you know, 28 years old. He's been in the league since 2019. His his best season is 600 yards. If he was on Miami the last two years, and he couldn't catch more than three, he couldn't um, have more than 300 yards receiving. You know, At Perry to me has a decent chance. Bub Means also has a decent chance. Um, but I think At Perry, I would put my money on him winning that outside X receiver role for the for the Saints. So there you have it, guys. That is. Um, dynasties deep dynasty stashes for every nfc team let me know what you think in the comments let me know if i miss someone or there's someone else you have questions about and uh, we'll definitely get to it as always appreciate you guys watching catch you all in the next video